Once again, Robert Nauer, Unfiltered. Now today's topic is a little off center from what I typically do. I'm going to go back to the Navy. When I, as a lieutenant, had been sent to the Combat Systems Technical Schools Command in Mare Island, California, I was both the supply officer of the command, which is a pretty hefty responsibility, but I was also the comptroller, or in civilian life you'd say controller. In the government we call them comptrollers, responsible for all the money and the management of that money. And I was responsible dual-hatted for both the money, the management of the money for the command, the budget, and all of the assets that the command had, be they equipment, trucks, vehicles, desk, furniture, and inventory of component items that we use in our schoolhouses, sonars, radars, components, you name it. Total value of all the assets that I managed at the time was $480 million in components. And that was just components. And then, of course, there were buildings and facilities and cars and, of course, the budget and the payroll for the civilians, which was several million dollars because all the military were paid for by military appropriations. Now, that's just a lead up to what I was. And being that I was the comptroller of the command, in other words, the keeper of the purse strings, as a Navy Supply Corps officer and keeper of the purse strings, I yielded probably almost more power than the commanding officer himself did. And that is typically true. You wield a tremendous amount of power as a Navy pork chop or supply officer, especially if you're the comptroller. And I remember one day when my deputy, Lee LeClaire, wonderful retired Navy Master Chief, said to me, Bob, you haven't met Kathleen yet, have you? And I said, who's Kathleen? And she goes, well, she's the... um, facilities person up on the hill and she's a little different than most people and I said how so and he goes well I'm gonna I'm not gonna tell you I'm gonna leave it up to you to decide what you think about her because you got a meeting at two o'clock today well sure enough at two o'clock Kathleen O'Sullivan comes prancing into my office and my office was located in the basement of this old historical building where Abraham Lincoln had visited. And along with her was a little young male ensign. That's E-N-S-I-G-N, ensign. It's like an O-1. A J-G is an O-2 and a lieutenant is an O-3, etc. And so she's got this little ensign trailing behind her, which I never really quite understood what his position was. Um, Although I did understand that he was civil engineering. An ensign civil engineer. I had never met an ensign civil engineer. And he was very quiet the entire time. So this senior officer to me, she was senior only in that she was one rank higher than I was. She was a lieutenant commander. And when she came in, she had green eye shadow. And she she had red hair, green eye shadow. She was Irish. And on her eyelids, and this is a no-shitter, she was wearing green sparkle for the Irish. And it wasn't um, the, the National Day the Irish have either. And she comes in like a bull in a china shop telling me what I'm going to give her and what she needs and when can she get it, blah, blah, blah. And she was a little bullheaded and demanding. And I just sat there and kind of listened to her pontificate about what she was going to get from me, the comptroller. Well, as my deputy, Lee LeClaire, sat directly across from me, I looked up at her and I said, Excuse me, you said your name is Lieutenant Commander Kathleen O'Sullivan? She said, That's correct. And I said, um, Kathleen, and I picked up my shirt collar that had my collar devices on it that showed the pork chop, the the Supply Corp oak leaf, gold oak leaf. And I said, Kathleen, do 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 you understand what this oak leaf is here that I'm wearing? And she goes, no. And I said, you know the oak leaf you're wearing as a lieutenant commander, right? And she goes, yeah. And I said, well, 
let me explain something to you. I said this little supply core oak leaf here means that I have more power than you will ever have. It means that you don't come into my office demanding what you're going to get. You can come into my office and you can ask for something. You can um, give me a issue that you have and ask me to help you solve it. But you don't come into my office, even though I'm a lieutenant, and tell me. You do not tell me what I'm going to do for your division. Because I'm the comptroller. I am the guy that controls all of the money that you will ever get in your entire fucking life as long as you're at this command. And if you don't change your attitude, you may not get a whole lot of money. So what I'm going to ask you and your little ensign here to do is you're going to get up right now. And I, and I mean, get up, go outside my door. Wait about three minutes, knock on my door, and then you come back in and you start the whole conversation over again with me. You got it? Well, she was so nonplussed. She was kind of like caught like a deer in headlights, not knowing how to respond to what I had just said to her. And she, um, she said, what? And I said, you're going to get up right now, get out of my office. Go wait outside, think about how you came in here, and then you're going to start this whole conversation all over again in a whole different manner. And she was so startled, she and her ensign got up and left my office. And I looked at my deputy, and he was, he was snickering and giggling and laughing in a way because he kind of was getting an inference of what I was going to do. And what I had said to her. And sure enough, three minutes later, she knocks on my door and she pokes her head in and she goes, may we enter? And I said, sure, come on in, sit and have a seat. And she started the whole conversation off differently this time. She said, I'm Kathleen O'Sullivan. This is so-and-so, my facilities uh, architect. And I have a request and I'd like you to consider it. I said, okay, what is it? And she again started telling me what her request was, but she did it in a whole different mannerism, much more subdued and not as demanding. When she originally came into my office, she did so because she thought she was bigger than me, higher than me, mightier than me, just because she was a lieutenant commander and I was a lieutenant. But what she failed to understand, and this is often what people in life fail to understand, is just exactly who she was talking to. Not what she was talking to, but who she was talking to. She was talking to an individual, be it a man or a woman, who controlled all of the commands per strings, all of the money. And when you control all of the money, you control everything and the outcomes. So with that, the, the lesson to learn is always, before you speak to somebody, know who you are talking to. Know how to approach them. And never ever think, just because you're richer or you have a higher rank, that you are somehow better than the people you are speaking to. For I have known many people who are homeless today that were at one time PhDs, and now they're homeless. And yet they're still human beings, and they still think a certain way. I've met many doctors that, that are holier than, than thou, and think that they're better than their patients. So I thought this would, little story would be a little apropos for the situation in life. Kind of like how Donald Trump often speaks to everybody, that everybody is lower or beneath him. Would you ever really want another president who treats all Americans as they are beneath him? Hmm. 
Well, anyway, food for thought, and that's why I call this Bob Nauer Unfiltered, or well, Robert Nauer Unfiltered. Have a good day.